Okay, this sermon's entitled Calvin Ignorance. That's the name of the sermon. And yes, I'm going to expose Calvinism. I'm going to keep exposing Calvinism because Calvinism is proof that we're in the last days. Calvinism, the Calvinists out there are the ones that are the scoffers, as the Bible talks about in Second Peter. And, and, it's, it, and all Calvinism is is based on ignorance, foolishness, ignoring stuff. Okay? The Bible makes it very clear God does not want us to be ignorant. So let's turn over to 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's take a look at uh, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Now what's the one thing here we're talking about? Well, let's just keep reading. And this is what Calvinists deny. Okay? That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And, as a, and a thousand years as one day. Now look at this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Well, according to the Calvinists, God is slack because he only he, he only died for certain people. Jesus Christ only died for certain people, the elect. So that would make God a slacker. Well, the God of Calvinism is a slacker. It's called Satan. Okay? But is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the thing is, God does not want anyone to perish in hell. That's not what the Calvinists are teaching. They're saying that he, he wants people to, hell, to go to hell. You know why they're saying that? Because they're wicked, demonic people. That's why they say it. And you know what? Arminianism is garbage, trash, heretical nonsense too. So I'm not, I don't believe in any of it. But the Bible makes it very clear. Let's jump back to verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. That describes Calvinists perfectly. Think about it. You get on YouTube and every, every Calvinist is fighting against another Calvinist, trying to expose each other. It's ridiculous. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm exposing Calvinism, but I'm not a Calvinist. I hate Calvinism. And I have the right to expose it because I don't buy into any of it. The Bible doesn't teach any of that garbage. The total depravity, the tulip straight out of the pits of hell anyway. Okay, period. You can't back up any of that stuff with Scripture. You, all you can do is twist a few verses here and there. And that's all they know how to do. They twist verses to their own destruction, the Bible says. Now, Let's take a look at one of the verses that refutes Calvinism and, and, and prove right now that there's no way around it. Let's go to 1 Timothy. Calvinist, Calvinism is wicked. It's not Christianity. It's, it's, it's Satanism is what it is. And nobody, nobody who calls himself a Calvinist has any right even naming the name of Christ at all. Okay? Because John Calvin was a murderer um, and why are we naming ourselves after him? Because that's what Calvinists are, murderers. They're wicked. They're murdering the gospel. They're murdering people's faith. They're murdering people's hope. They're wicked as hell. Calvinism is straight out of the pits of hell. Every last Calvinist right now is wicked. <clears throat> Period. <clears throat> and they make it very clear how wicked they are by the things they say. You know, you know, they, they teach all this lordship salvation. They believe, you know, they believe faith is not enough. Now, the sad thing is they believe that we don't produce our own faith. God has to give us, has to mag magically make us have faith. But then they go around and say it's not even enough. Because you've got to persevere to the end. See how, see, how, see how contradictory they are? See how double-minded they are? Double-tongued? They can't even make up their mind on what they believe. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. See, the God of Calvinism is dead. Okay, because think about it. John Calvin's dead. Okay? But we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Now, here's what they try to... I guess this is what they would, this is what they would do with that verse. Well, I don't know what they do with it. Because, frankly, you can't do anything with it, but just believe it. Okay? But to sit there and say that Jesus Christ is the, is the, God, is the Savior of just all the elect is resting that into the verse. It's not, it doesn't say that. Okay? And this is, it would be a redundant statement anyway. Let's think about it. Okay, let's, let's read the verse in light of how the Calvinists would, would uh, rest this verse. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, the elect, especially those that believe. That's redundant. If the elect have to believe because God makes them believe, why would it need to be in there twice? Why couldn't it just say, you know, if, if Calvinism were true, this verse would have to say, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the dead God who is the Savior of the elect and God makes them believe. No, he's the Savior of everyone, period. But it's not going to do you any good if you don't believe. 
that's that's not too that's not very complicated. I don't see what's so hard to understand about that. It's, that's what that verse is saying. He's the savior of all men, especially those that believe. So what he, what he's saying is that if you don't believe on Christ, you're not yet saved. Doesn't mean the the offer does not still stand. It doesn't mean he's not still he's not the savior. Calvinism is nothing but foolishness and it's ignorance. Calvin ignorance. Yeah, people get mad because like I say this. Hey, look. I guess they want me to be nice and just you know, give them a little pat on the back. and they're, they're just a little bit off. No, they're not a little bit off. They're worshiping the devil. They're following the devil. And when they die, they're going to go to hell. Period. For believing all this madness. For not trusting in the real Jesus. You know, I used to say, well, maybe some of them... Hey, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand why anyone who's saved, who's got the Holy Spirit inside of them, would ever contend for that garbage. It's nonsense. All the saved people on YouTube seem to reject Calvinism. All the grace people. And see, we're saved by grace. So, duh. All saved people reject Calvinism, period. No saved person's going to support that nonsense. Because we're supposed to be loving people. We're not supposed to be worshiping a so-called God who hates the non-elect. And then, and then want, looks forward to damning them to hell. Now, if God hates anyone, it's, he hates a Calvinist. For, for, for distorting his character, for changing his, for, for changing things about him, for perverting the word of God, for changing who he is, and you're just totally blaspheming God. I think God is sick of it. Because think about it, he says, for, he, got, he said it clearly, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You think God is happy with the person that says, well, that doesn't really mean everyone. doesn't really mean whosoever. It just means the elect. No, he's not happy with it. He's fed up with it. Completely fed up with it. Let's turn to Second Peter. Turn back to Second Peter. Let's go over some verses that describe the Calvinist now. See, you shouldn't be this mean. Hey, look, I'm going to get meaner. If they don't stop teaching their garbage, making up stuff, okay, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, that's a Calvinist, they can't stop sinning, they can't stop lying, they can't stop putting up videos, they can't stop believing all these lies, that, that describes them perfectly. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetousness, with covetous practices. Cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, okay, They've forsaken the Bible and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. That sounds like a Calvinist right there. Boom. God didn't die for, Christ didn't die for certain people. So that person has to go to hell forever for no reason. Well, that's a wicked, and that's, that's, that's loving the wages of unrighteousness. Think about it. What's the wages of unrighteousness? Hell. The wages of sin is death. Calvinists want people to go to hell, but without giving them a chance or a choice, that tells you that these people love, they're the ones that love the, the wages of unrighteousness. Okay? But was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass, and that's what Calvinists are. Okay? And that's a Bible word. The dumbass, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. A Calvinist is a well without water. Clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of, the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Oh, does it sound like they're saved? No, it doesn't, does it? Now, I, I know some Calvinists, I had to take back what I said just, just a minute ago. I know some that are saved, but I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. It was because they did not start out that way. They started out believing the Bible. They started out believing Jesus Christ's words when he says, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. They believe, eternal, they believe in eternal security and they believe in salvation by grace through faith alone. Now, they got mixed. This person I'm thinking of got mixed up and became a Calvinist, and because he was not very deft in understanding the Bible, he he thought that well, okay, this makes this makes perfect sense because somebody messed with somebody messed with them. John MacArthur we start, was was, was read, the guy, my friend was reading John MacArthur, and it just made sense. It doesn't make sense. John MacArthur's garbage, and none of his none of his teachings make any sense. <clears throat> But if you don't know any better, you can get fooled by the devil. That's what the devil uses John MacArthur, because John MacArthur's a child of the devil. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, 
those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. See, there are people living in error. That's what Calvinism is. It's error. It's wrong. Every last bit of it. You know, Arminianism is wrong too. Don't and I, I if a person calls me an Arminian, they're just a they're just a wicked coward and liar. That's what they are. Let me repeat, they're a wicked cowardly liar. Because I'm not an Arminian. I, I hate Arminianism. I, I can't stand it. You know, Arminians, their their God is a psychopath. Okay, but so is the God of Calvinism. He's a psychopath too. The Bible says God is love. You know, I don't love these these false teachings. I hate them. And hey, we're supposed to hate every false way, David said. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. That's a Calvinist, if I ever saw one. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if, if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Now, here's why I really hate Calvinism. I hate it because, number one, it's man-made. Number two, they, the Calvinist is deciding who God is. Instead of opening the Word of God and, and letting the Bible decide who, who God is and what, you know, and, and what God is all about, and, you know, what are His attributes, what is God, who is God, instead of letting the Bible decide that, they make Him up. See, they created their own God, the sovereign God. Hey, the word sovereign's not even in the Bible one time. Show me that. So why don't we use a biblical word for, for a change? Okay, now who is the real God? Let's go ahead and describe, let's, 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 let's define who the real God is. God is love. God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ was the perfect Pascal sacrifice. He died for all of our sins. He was buried and rose again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now the God of Calvinism says we don't have a free will. If we don't have a free will, then why does it say, God is not slack concerning us word. <clears throat> He's desire, he wishes for no one to perish. If God wishes for no one to perish, and people perish, it's because, guess why? Guess why they perish? They chose to. Choice, free will. Sure we have a free will. They just, they, 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 they make, they make this stuff up. They assume there's no free will. Hey, it doesn't matter what you assume. It matters what the Bible teaches. Okay? Let's go to a verse that proves we have a free will. Straight out of the Bible. I don't believe this apart from the Bible. If the Bible didn't teach this, I wouldn't believe it. But the Bible teaches we have a free will. Now, our free will is not more powerful than, than God. And our free will cannot cause us to lose our salvation. That's the, that's the difference. Arminians think that you can use your free will to lose your salvation. You can't. Okay? Now, look at... Romans 20, excuse me, Revelation 21. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. It says whoever's a thirst. Now, you can choose to not take the gift of life. You can, you can say, no, I don't want it. I'd rather be a Calvinist or an atheist or an agnostic or a Satanist or lost. I don't want the free gift. Okay, now the, the sad thing is, if we don't have a free will, why am I even preaching this? Okay, if God, if God is sovereign and causing everything, then God would just be causing me to preach this. No, I'm preaching because I, I, I asked God, I prayed, and I said, what do you want me to preach on? And this just came into my mind. Calvin ignorance. Okay, and the thing about it is, the ones that don't believe in free will, they're choosing not to believe in free will. So they're using their free, paradoxically, they're using their free will to not believe in free will. They believe, see, they, that's see how stupid the, the, these Calvinists are? Oh, I don't believe in free will. Uh, what, what, why don't you believe in free will? I, I, I don't, well, I just don't believe it. I, it, it, it. I'm choosing not to believe it. See how stupid it is? It doesn't make any sense. It's ridiculous. Calvinism is, is, is foolish, garbage, every last bit of it. And the people say, well, you, I've been accused of, of hating God. Oh, I hate your God, all right. I hate the God of Calvinism. Hey, I'll spit on your God. Your, your, your demonic devil is what he is. Hey, but the God of the Bible, I don't hate. I love the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible says, you know, whosoever will. It says, in this was manifested the love of God toward us, because God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him here in his love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. See, the Calvinists don't love other people. They don't think their God loves other people. 
Hey, uh, this one idiot, Calvin, so I can't even think of who it was, he said if God truly loves us, he's making fun of Dave Hunt, if God truly loves us, then why do people go to hell? Burn forever. It's because they didn't receive the free gift. It's not that God hates those people. God sent his son to die for everyone, period. Okay? No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. People go to hell because they choose not to be saved, period. Okay? It's our choice. Just because we have a choice in the matter does not mean we're saving ourselves. No. God is the Savior. He, right there, it says, I'm reading all these verses. He's the propitiation. He sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. We can't save ourselves. That's why we have to receive the free gift of eternal life by believing in Jesus for it. Okay? Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Now let's jump over to chapter 5. Okay? Now who's the real God? I've already made it clear. He's the, he, he's, he loves us. He created us. He created the whole universe. He, you know, he sent his son to die for all of our sins. And he offers eternal life as a free gift. And now verse 20 makes it very clear just exactly who God is. And let's just look at verse 20 of chapter 5. And we know that the Son of God is come, that's Jesus Christ, and hath given us an understanding. See, Calvinists are ignorant. They don't have an understanding of anything. They're just absolutely ignorant people. They don't understand squat about the Bible. You know, they have to try to figure it all out with their tulip. No, last time I checked, the Bible said, God said in his word, come to me like a little child, period. Now, there's no way a child understands the tulip. Hey, when I got saved, I didn't even know what, what Calvinism was. When I got saved, I didn't even know what the tulip was, but you know what I did? You know what I knew? I knew that I was going to go to heaven if I believed in Jesus. And I knew I wouldn't go to hell if I believed on Jesus. And the Bible says, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth on him is not condemned. The Bible says, he, you know, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I understood that. I believed it. And Jesus Christ saved me, period. And if he didn't save me, then all those verses are lies. But see, God cannot lie. Let uh, You know, man, 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 man is a liar. God does not lie. In hope of eternal life, which God, who, who you know, who promised, well, let's just turn there. Titus chapter 1. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, Promised before the world began. God cannot lie. Okay? And God gives us an understanding. See, I remember about, about nine years ago, when I first even heard, I heard the word Calvinist. I was already saved nine years ago. But see, I heard the word, I heard the word Calvinism. I was like, what is that? What is Calvinism? I thought it was some like B Buddhism or something. I thought it was something like Hinduism. Or some other false, just false, you know, false religion, and it, it turned out that's what it is. But you know, I, I, didn't, I never realized at first that it was people naming the name of Christ, thinking they're saved, when in fact they're not, or most of them are not, because they, 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 they they've added something to the gospel. Now, some may be saved. Now, there are some that believe in eternal security, and there are some that believe in faith alone, and they believe on the name of Christ. I believe they are saved because that's what God. It's the name of Christ that saves. Okay. And he saves you. He saves us for his name's sake. But you know what? The lordship crowd—they're not. They're not saved because they don't believe the simple gospel. They have a hard time believing it. You know, that 1689 Baptist put this stupid video up, and he, he he kept saying he believed, but he but then he would go around and act like he sounded like he didn't really believe. He, he was like he was really struggling with, with with whether or not he believed on Christ, and he kept mocking the fact that he just simply believed and then go on and become a Satanist or whatever? Where does it say in the Bible that that, that you can't, you, that a person can, where does it say a per, well, that a person will not become a Satanist after they believe? The Bible says, you know, that some fell, went back and followed Satan. The Bible talks about that. So, so I mean, we don't need to be reading stuff into the, the word that's not there. A person's a devil worshiper, and they really understand, they take God, they take it seriously. The thing about it is devil worshipers don't take God seriously. They hate God. They hate him. The, 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 the thought of a devil worshiper just believing on Christ, getting saved—that that is—that that won't—that will not happen. 
first of all, they'd have to realize that what they're doing is wrong. I know some devil worshippers that got saved, but they, they realized that, that what they were doing was just horrible. And they realized that they were on their way to hell, and they realized that they're going to be judged for their sins, and, and they're going to have to pay for You know, they're going to be held accountable. And then they, they understood that, and then they, they believed on Christ. They did what John 3.16 said, and they got saved. Now, whether they now whether they go back to it or not, I don't I don't I don't know. I would think like to say they would not go back into that mess because why would somebody want to worship Satan, who who's gonna who's basically who's gonna uh you know who's deceiving people into going to hell, basically saying don't worry about it it's that's not really, hell doesn't even exist that's a lot to lie, but I'm not gonna get into all that. The bottom line is if you believe on Jesus Christ for the gift of eternal life you are saved forever no matter what. He that, but let me repeat it. It's a simple verse. It's called John 3.36. He that believeth, this is how simple it is. He that believeth on the Son hath, present tense, everlasting life. You either believe on the Son or you don't. Now the Son is not, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is not somebody who died for only the elect. That's the wrong Christ, that's another Christ, and that's a Christ that won't save. Because Christ died for everyone. Okay, that's clear. Now you have to believe he died for you personally. I don't. What they're, but if you're believing the wrong Christ, it won't matter. It won't matter. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given to us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and that we are in Him that is true, even in His Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God. Now look at this, and eternal life. The true God, eternal life. Now. According to the, the five points of tulip, you don't have eternal life. You do if you make it to the end of, of your faith. That's not receiving eternal life. That's trying to earn it. And you can't earn it because it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration, being born again, regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So if you're trying to work for it, you don't have it. Okay? Here's, 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 this, this, this is a good way to put this you know, in terms of salvation and whatnot. You don't do anything to be saved. Christ did everything. If you're trying to do something, you've just you've destroyed the free gift. Calvinism has destroyed the free gift. And they're ignorant. And Calvinists are ignorant to the core. And you notice they don't use a whole lot of verses, they just they like to quote people and then maybe throw a verse in whenever they can kind of twist it. But see, I can preach what I believe, and I can go on and on, and I can just give you I can just keep showing you verse after verse after verse. And it all runs consistently. It all runs together consistently. But see, a Calvinist does not know how to do that. They can't do it. Think about it. Here's how you can detect a false teacher right up front. When they don't give you a lot of verses, they just go ahead and kind of give you, a, kind of scratch the surface. Oh, here's a little verse to back up what I said. Hey, listen. Anyone who's given you a lot of verses, the more verses I give, the more I, the more false teaching is being exposed. So, if this person's a false teacher. They, gotta, they have to really kind of curtail the amount of verses they use because if they use too many, you're going to find them out. You're going to you're going to figure it out. And they they like to go into the Old Testament and they like to scramble around and pick a verse here out and oh this looks like it backs up what this looks like it's going to back up my uh, what I believe. Let's go ahead and go to a verse they use. Second Samuel chapter three. This verse proves limited atonement according to them. Doesn't prove limited atonement. Doesn't prove anything. Okay. Where is this verse? Hang on. First Samuel chapter three, my bad. It says in verse uh, fourteen, and therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. Oh, does that mean that they Christ didn't die for them? No, it just says it's not talking about the Christological sacrifice. It's talking about like an animal sacrifice or something. And no sin is going to be purged by, you know, forever by an animal sacrifice. That's the, that's the whole point is to let you know that Christ, when Christ came in, he's, the, he's our propitiation forever. He, you know, that's why it says he saved us to the uttermost. He ever liveth, he ever liveth to make intercession for us. These sacrifices were not going to do that forever. These were temporary sacrifices. That doesn't, that doesn't prove limited atonement. That's the most twisted, ridiculous, ridiculous argument I've ever heard. Now that proves limited. There you go. 
No, it doesn't prove anything. See what they do? They, they know they, that I, I believe deep down these Calvinists know that they're wicked as hell. They know they're they're, they're not saved, and a lot of them, and they, they know that they that what they're teaching is garbage and it's wicked. And I think they realize that. And that's why they have to kind of, well, let me just let me, let me pick another let me grab another little verse out here. Let me pick. Let me see what I can grab. Ooh, there you go. This looks like it proves my point. And they, they their point can't. None of it can be proven with the Bible. Yeah, it can be proven with logic, but you know what? We're not. We don't prove what we believe with logic. We prove with God's word. Okay, it doesn't matter what 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 what, what seems logical. Sure, sometimes it does seem logical. I would give him that. It does seem logical. Calvinism seems logical. Okay, let me, let me wrap it up in a nutshell. How logical it seems. Well, you're dead in your sins and trespasses. Absolutely. That that just simply means you cannot save yourself. You need somebody else to save you, which Jesus Christ does. Um. Okay, because because Christ saved you, you're going to persevere to the end because he's going to do the do the miraculous work through you and you're going to persevere to the end. The problem with all this is what does that even mean? You're going to persevere to the end. Now how do you know that? Are you are you got some type of crystal ball? Are you are you psychic? Do you know for sure you're going to make it to the end? No, you don't. And there are tons of scriptures that talk about people that did not persevere to the end. Okay? Like 2 Timothy if we if we believe not, he cannot deny himself. He abided faithful and cannot deny himself. Where, where where's the persevering there? It's not there. What about um? Let's just turn to John. None of it's biblical. None of it. It seems logical, but that's but see, it doesn't matter. The Satan's good at that. Satan wants people to to fall for stuff, and this is what one of his methods. So yeah, I, when I first heard of Calvinism a lot nine years ago or so I thought it was just another cult and that's all it, it, it's all it actually turned out to be a cult a wicked faulty way of interpreting the Bible and none of it's even necessary that's the that's the main thing about Calvinism it's not necessary the tulips not necessary okay Jesus Christ is God's son perfect never sinned he died on the cross for your sins he was buried and rose again he gives eternal life as a free gift it's all by God's grace you're saved by grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone that's what I believe. That's what the Bible teaches. And there's no tulip in any of that. I didn't have to believe it's a stupid tulip to get to get to that. I just believe the Bible. But now, John 20. Well, let's see. Be not faithless, but believing. Well, I thought it's not possible for us to be faithless because according to the Calvinist, you, you won't be faithless because God will. It's going to persevere you to the end. Then why is Jesus telling him, be not faithless, but believing? Because he knew they, they would believe. That's, that is dumb. It doesn't even make any sense. It's like, I know my neighbor's going to come over today, so I'm just going to call him up and then beg him to come over. When I know he's coming anyway. See how illogical this is? That's all Calvinism is. It's ignorance. That's all I have. Dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon. I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to put this sermon up or not. It's just too many people like want to attack, and that just shows their true nature and shows that they're not willing to listen. And, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really willing to listen to what they have to say either because, you know what, I pretty much figured it. I've got it figured out. What, but most Calvinists, they say I misrepresent them. But you know what? Show me where I'm misrepresenting what, what people believe. And, you know, I really don't care to know what, any more about what they believe. Because if they're going to name, put John Calvin's name in front of what they believe, I don't, I couldn't care less about it. Okay? Keep us safe, bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.